everyone and welcome to the channel. My name is Laura and this is Laura's Little Library. I am super excited for today's video. I have been anticipating this video for over a month. Literally, I think since the end of June, I kind of started getting these inklings maybe in July, and it's finally here. So as you can probably tell from the title of this video, it is going to be mostly a come book shopping with me, as well as a really big haul, and decorating for Halloween and spooky season and just fall in general. So. First thing we're going to do is we're going to explain everything a little bit, how the layout of this video is going to look, because there's, there's a lot being jammed into this video and there's a reason for it. I am starting this really exciting, I don't want to call it a reading journey, that makes it sound like so much more deep and spiritual than it is, when it's, I have decided that this year for spooky season, I am going to do themed reading vlogs every week, all the way up until Halloween. I mean, obviously the themes are going to be Halloween-ish. And I need books in order to read in order to do that. So, yeah, this sounded so much more exciting in my head. But it, it really is. I'm super excited. So, like, this week's vlog is really only going to be today. I have a lot of fun things happening today, but it's not going to be a week-long reading vlog. That will start next Thursday. Um, but the themes for those are going to be, we're going to start off with a thriller slash horror week. And then it's going to go to Dark Academia, which I am super excited for. And then after that, it's going to be werewolves, ghosts, then vampires, and then witches. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six. So that's six weeks of themed reading vlogs, again, thriller, dark academia, werewolves, ghosts, vampires, witches. And then I'm going to do a separate vlog for Halloween itself, that's what I did last year. Hopefully this year will be much more successful. Um, but that is why in recent videos I've been mentioning bonus videos. So I upload every Thursday. And these vlogs are going to continue uploading on Thursdays. There will be a Wednesday to Wednesday week vlog, so I can edit them and get them uploaded on Thursday. And these bonus videos are going to be going up early in the week, probably around Tuesday, and they are going to be just regular content that I would put out, you know, like fall recommendations, maybe, or tags, challenges, you know, just all kinds of other normal fall time bookish content. So you'll still be getting planned content from me on top of the vlogs every week. So it's really exciting. I'm super excited to do this. I, I have been planning it out and brainstorming and doing all kinds of things in preparation for it and I'm super, super excited. Um, and then another thing that I'm trying to do with these vlogs is so obviously I'm reading the books themed to the week. <laughs> I'm hoping to read two or three books a week, probably, hopefully, is my goal. Um, but then I want to do one fall slash spooky season activity per week as well, just so that I'm motivated to do all the fun fall activities that I like to do every year or almost every year. <laughs> so I will be probably vlogging those as well. And then on top of that, I will be watching a movie every week that also corresponds with the vlog topic of the week. So if it's vampire week, I'm going to watch a vampire movie. If it's um, werewolf week, I'm going to watch a movie with werewolves or shapeshifters. I should clarify that. Werewolf week, each of these weeks have fun names, and so those will be the names of the video, um, but werewolves will be shapeshifting in general. So it doesn't have to be werewolves, but it is shapeshifters. Um, yeah, so I'm really excited to go forward with these plans. I have some books bought already previously that I've been saving and not allowing myself to read until spooky season, until I can fit them into their proper week. But I do not have all the books that I need. So I'm going to go book shopping and you're going to come with me 
and basically what I've done is I've watched other people's videos, past videos, current videos, you know, toured around on Bookstagram a bit and all the different bookish communities, TikTok, looking for different books to fit each of these weeks. So I have a giant list of ideas of books that fit into different weeks. So if I go to a bookstore and I see it, I will then buy it and read it, but I'm not sticking to it where it's like, okay, I know that for Dark Academia, I'm going to buy this book and I'm going to buy this book. If I find, if I don't find those books or I find something else that seems just as interesting or more interesting, I will buy those instead. So I have kind of a loose idea of the books that I do want to get. But yeah, and then after that, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna decorate my shelves. Um, I finally filmed my bookshelf tour, so you can go ahead, the link to that will be in the description and probably up here somewhere. Um, so if you want to see like just my base bookshelf tour before I add any decorations, go right on ahead and click there. Otherwise, I will be showing you my shelves with the decorations and stuff. And I will also probably buy a couple more little decorations, just a few things to increase my collection. So yeah, I think it's about time that we can go to the bookstore, I believe. So, oh, one thing to note. The first bookstore that I will be going to is called Winding Trails. It is a local bookstore here. I've never been there, been here before because we just moved to a different city and so I haven't been able to explore the area too much. But I, I saw that there was this local new bookstore that was a 20 minute walk from our apartment. So I will be going there first. If I don't find everything that I need, then I will most likely drive to another local bookstore called The Red Balloon that I've gone to many times before and love. If somehow I don't find the books that I need at either of these stores, which I highly doubt will be the case, I will then go to Barnes & Noble because I do have a Barnes & Noble membership and I don't know of any other bookstores, uh, local ones that I would like to support. But I, I don't think it'll come to needing to go to Barnes & Noble, but just in case, I do have that backup plan. Um, but yeah, so I'm gonna go explore this new local bookstore and I'm excited to take you with me. So let's get going. So, it's been a pretty good day. It's been pretty successful so far. I've, bought, I've gone to the two local stores that I went to, and I'll talk about that more when I'm home. But I am outside Barnes & Noble because I need three more books. Three more books. Maybe four. I really shouldn't get four. I will not be getting more. But I do kind of need three more books. So, I will be going into Barnes & Noble now, and I will catch up with you when I am home to do a full haul of everything spooky. 
So not just bookish, but everything's spooky. Hello. So, I am now in different clothing, and it is indeed a different day. However, the rest of this video will still take place on the day that this is being filmed. This is very abrupt, I am aware. Um, so basically what happened is that I filmed the haul part of this video, you know, the main part of the video. You come book shopping with me and then I show this ginormous haul that I bought. And my phone decided that it wasn't going to properly save the video and so it can't be watched or uploaded or anything like that. So I am refilming the haul. <laughs> So I'm going to go through week by week and show you the different books that I got for each category. They're all now comfortably on my shelf because I did film this and then it didn't work. So we're just going to go through and do it all again. Which will, for you will be the first time seeing it anyway, so I mean, eh. Enjoy. So the first week is one that I bought way too many books for. I was trying to go for two to three or two, three, or four books a week, depending on length and style of the book. Um, but I ended up with six books for this week. Um, so I would love to read them all, but I don't think I will, but I'm definitely going to try. So the first one that I bought, I bought in Ecuador, so I've kind of already shown it, and that is One by One by Ruth Ware. And this is basically a bunch of co-workers get stuck in a cabin due to snowy weather, and then one by one, they are all being murdered. So secrets come out, they have to find out why they're being murdered and who is killing them. Then the next one that I bought, I was super excited for. I bought it in a local bookstore back home in Michigan. So before today, there are a few books that I did acquire before today just to kind of try and spread out the money being spent but I'm still gonna cover them all and that is Final Girl Support Group by Grady Hendrix. This basically takes the idea of all the girls from different like movies and books and whatnot who have been like the last survivor of their horror story and they create a little support group except that someone finds out and decides that they all need to die so they are being murdered. If there is a final girl of this book, I'm gonna laugh so hard, just saying. Then the next one that I got, I've heard good and great reviews of, but I heard the premise for it and I was like, oh my gosh, I need it. And that is 56 Days, and this is by Katherine Ryan Howard. This is a COVID-19 quarantine thriller. Basically, right before we all go in lockdown, a man and a woman meet and decide to start a relationship. And because of lockdown, they decide, mm, let's let's quarantine together. That'll be a great way to get to know if we are compatible, if we like each other, and we really want this relationship. Except I believe it's dual perspective, and you follow the modern day of someone's dead. I don't know who. I don't know how or why, but that's why you follow their relationship. But then you also follow the detective who's trying to figure it out. And then I also got Wilder Girls by Rory Powers, and this was actually gifted to me by a friend of mine who was like, oh my word, you need to read it, it's so good, you need to read it, write a review of it, etc. and so forth. So I got this as a gift, so I should probably read it for <laughs> my friend. I have two more. So I bought House of Hollow, and this is by Crystal Sutherland. And I've heard so many good things about this book, just nonstop praise, and I thought, you know, it's a little shorter. I could probably knock it out in a day or so um, if I, you know, sat down and read it a day. So then that wouldn't be a problem at all. But um, when I was checking this out, the person at the counter as this one and a couple of the other ones were from a local bookstore called Red Balloon that I very much love going to. Um, she sat there and just raved about this book for like two to three minutes just saying she loved it, she read it, it was amazing, it was so good. She's trying to get other people to read it and so I am very motivated to pick this one up quite quickly because um, I want to know what all that excitement is about. And this book even interested one of my housemates so like that's always, you always know it's going to be a good book. The last book I got, I've talked about on this channel before. Um, and that is Mexican Gothic, and this is by Silvio Moreno Garcia, and this is about a woman who gets a letter from her cousin saying, hey, 
everything is not okay, you know, I'm living with this rich white guy, things aren't okay, or I'm living with this rich guy and things aren't okay, and um, so she has to go visit her cousin in Mexico, um, and I hear it's very gothic, I guess, um, but I've talked about this quite a bit, just wanting to read it, wanting to get it, and again, it's pretty short, it's shorter than I was expecting, so if I pick this up very quickly and finish it very quickly, then I'll have plenty of time for the other more thicker books. So yeah, I don't think I'm going to really be able to read all these books in a week. I would love to, obviously, because I want to read them all. But for one of the readathons that I am doing, they have a trick or treat question. and. For that question, I have picked out two books, and both are in this stack because I'm not going to be able to read all the books, but I really want to. Um, I've decided that two of these books, one is going to be my trick, one is going to be a treat, so comment down below letting me know which of these two books I will read. I'm not going to tell you which one is trick and which one is treat. I will also be posting a little graphic with these on all of my social medias, but choosing between these two. Coworkers Trapped, Mysterious Book from Friend, I don't know too much about it, um, but which one should I make sure to read this, this first week that I am doing this? So, trick or treat. So then moving on to the second week, that will be my Dark Academia week, and I have three books for this. The first one was also gifted to me by the same friend, and that was How We Fall Apart by Katie Zhao. And this is, it's marketed as thriller, but I've seen reviews where it's like, it's more dark academia than like super thriller-y, but it basically follows um, a murder of a girl in a friend group or someone who is popular, and it takes place just kind of at their school, and it handles the issue of parents putting so much pressure on their kids. So, it'll be a good uh, dark academia, I think I'm really excited to read it. I am trying to go through this somewhat quickly because I did buy a lot of books. Then the next one I have here is Ace of Spades, and this is by Farida Abike Imadie. And I have seen a lot of people buy this book and say they're super excited to read it, but not a lot of reviews. Um, but I believe that the characters in this book are either at a boarding school or a prep school or something, and they are receiving mysterious texts with their secrets, and they are getting blackmailed. So I am very excited to pick this one up. I mean, I just love this cover, how it looks like a playing card and it's Ace of Spades. Oh my gosh, I am super excited. And then the last one is another popular one here on BookTube, and that is A Lesson in Vengeance by Victoria Lee. I don't know too much about it. It has something to do with a, like, a preparatory school or something, and a death, and ghost haunting, and possibly witches, so I am super excited, and again, look at this cover, it is stunning, it is beautiful, it's gorgeous. I am super excited to read this, I, I hope I can get to all three of them. And then the third week is going to be my werewolf week, aka shapeshifters, because it doesn't necessarily have to be strictly werewolves, but just some sort of shapeshifting, because most werewolf books I was finding were like, just like, romance, which is fine, but I didn't want to sit and read like, four werewolf romance books in a row. But what I did find, first was Red Wolf, and this is by Rachel Vincent, and I did get this from Barnes & Noble. Um, but basically it's the idea that this girl can shapeshift into a wolf, and so she uses that to be the guardian of her village. She will roam the, the forest and make sure that they are safe. However, nobody knows that she does this because if they were to do that, then they would probably go after her and not actually appreciate what she's doing for them. And just more be focused on, oh my gosh, she's a beast, we must destroy her. But I believe someone is probably threatening that secret because, you know, that's kind of how books go, so gonna be fun. And then, the next one I got, it was the last book I got. I also got this at Barnes & Noble. If I don't mention where it's from, it's from a local bookstore. But it's called Curses, and it's by Lish McBride. And this, I've heard nothing about this, but it seems like a reverse Beauty and the Beast, where she 
met the wrong person at a party and was cursed to, to become a beast and it is her process of becoming a beast and then the guy is the one who like looks super handsome but like nobody likes and so he decides to help her for something for his own benefit and I'm assuming they're gonna fall in love because it's a Beauty and the Beast retelling but yeah she's turning into the beast she is in midst of shifting her shape so it, it counts and then the final book that I have, I'm really excited because I got it at the very first local bookstore that I went to, Winding Trails, and it is the first time I've actually been to that bookstore. And they had this shelf with local authors, which I thought was really cool. And one of them happened to be Hound of God, and it's a shape-shifting book. So this is by Steve McElstrom, and basically it's this woman who is a scientist and she does something to her DNA that causes her to turn into a wolf but she doesn't know if the wolf is good or bad and then the wolf starts killing people and she's like okay this is obviously bad I need to switch it back again it's a pretty short book um, but I'm always excited to support a local author and I should be able to whip through this and also fun fact it's even signed how cool is that I don't think I have any signed books other than this one and if I do I don't know it so it's very exciting for me. The fourth week is going to be my ghosts week and this is actually the week that inspired everything purely because last year I was gifted from my two years ago two years ago I was gifted from my college roommate this series. So the first book is The Reckoning I think or it's The Summoning. Nope. First book is The Summoning, and then we have The Awakening and The Reckoning. This is about a girl who can see ghosts. And I have been wanting to read this. I have been wanting to read this for so long, and I was like, I just need a week where I can focus on, like, reading this as well as other ghost stories to help me get me in the mood. So I was like, oh my word, a ghost week. So I don't... <laughs> I don't think I'll read all of them in the week because <laughs> they're each kind of chunky but it is a completed trilogy so it's kind of nice that I do have all of them as I generally tend to buy the first book, read it, love it, and then either get the rest of the books from the library or just fail to buy them. It's so sad. But I do have other books that I hope to read for Ghost Week. So I'm probably going to start with these other books before I actually um, start the trilogy so that when I finish these books I can just spend the rest of the week on the trilogy whether it's reading just the first book or the first two or all three. Depends on how much time I have. But I got the Ghosts in Apartment 2R. This is from the first local bookstore that I went to. This is by Dennis Markell and this is a middle grade. I have quite a bit of honestly middle grade is like ghost week ghost week and middle grade kind of go together now um I've been wanting to read more middle grade so I'm excited like this is great but basically it is about a boy who uh believes that there is a ghost living in apartment 2R and so he and his friends go all ghostbusters on it and try to figure out what's going on it seems adorable I think I'll fly through it so that's really exciting and then I also got a graphic novel. I got Sheets. And this Sheets is by Brenna Thumler. And it's beautiful. So again, I will fly right through this. I know the second one, Delicates, came out quite recently. I didn't want to get Delicates until I knew that I like Sheets. But I'll probably get Delicates. Especially if like it's Ghost Week, I read this and I have time. I'm probably going to go out and buy it. But we'll just have to see. I did get coupons from one of the local bookstores so even though I'm not supposed to buy any more books I might just have to uh, use those coupons but yeah so I'm excited to have a graphic novel on this list as well and then finally I have City of Ghosts by Victoria Schwab now guess what I've never read a Victoria Schwab book I've never read a Victoria Schwab book not a V.E. Schwab book, not any of her pen names. I have never read any books by this human being. 
So, Cydia Ghost, her middle grade word, this girl who is the daughter of like ghost hunters or like a TV show ghost hunter type thing, she can actually see ghosts. And they go to different cities and she's sitting there seeing all the ghosts and her parents are trying to be like, ooh, ghosts. So, again, it's pretty short. I think I'll fly through it, but it's my first Victoria Schwab book. How interesting and exciting, right? So those are kind of all the books. I did buy three ghost books, but I do also have this trilogy, so I'll have plenty to read for this week. Next, we have The Vampires. Now, again, I have three books here, and one of them is also a graphic novel, and that is Fangs, and this is by Sarah Anderson, and it's very, very short, and it's very beautiful, and like I said, it's a graphic novel, so like, but this is a graphic novel following the love story of a vampire and a werewolf. And so theoretically, this could have gone either way, like vampire or werewolf, both kind of had fangs. I chose to put it in Vampire Week 1 because I found three werewolf books and I did not find three vampire books. And two, the vampire's on the cover, so I just went with it. But again, very quick, very nice for this, not readathon, but bunch of reading I'm trying to do. Um, it's just so soft. I really want to put it next to my copy of Dracula when I finish this. Which reminds me, if I finish all books for Vampire Week and I still have time left, I should probably finish Dracula. I was supposed to have finished that for my class last spring. I'm still interested in finishing it. Anyway, that is not the point. That is not the point. The point is this next book. Vampires, Hearts, and Other Dead Things. And this is by... Margie Fustin, Fustin. Uh, basically, I believe that a girl and her father are struggling. What I think his health is struggling, so she goes to seek out a vampire to help save her father. Yeah, I think she seeks out a vampire to help save her father. Um, I'm really excited. I love how bright the colors of this cover are for it being a vampire book. Like it's very much like a contemporary vampire, which I am a okay with. Because even though I'm going for anything and everything spooky this fall season, as, as always, as usual, um, I love that it's going to seem just a little bit more realistic to actually make it seem like vampires are in our world, and I'm here for it. So, really excited for this one. This one I had heard of before looking for vampire books, and so I kept it in my mind, in my back pocket, purely for this week. And then the last book that I have is Grady Hendrix's other book, um, The Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires. Um, I heard that this one is not as good as Final Girls, and it's kind of a bummer that I will be reading Final Girls first, so that I am theoretically reading the better book, and then I'm reading the less good book. But I think enough time and enough books will pass in between, and also, I'm not very good at, like, associating, like, oh yeah, this book was definitely written by this author, I can tell because blah blah blah. I'm not good at that, and also I've never read any Grady Hendrix books anyway, so I would not be good at that. But, yeah, it's, it's a bit of a chunker, but that's okay, because these other ones are gonna fly through. Um, but yeah, I, I still, people have said this is a solid book, and I'm still excited to read it anyway. Like, it's, if you couldn't tell by the title, it is a book club who figure out that their neighbor or someone close to them is probably a vampire so they gotta they gotta get rid of him they gotta <laughs> they gotta sort him out a little bit and just uh slay the vampire so but i love the color the cover is so fall and i love it also i forgot to mention i do have one more book for vampire week and that is Hunting Prince Dracula by Carrie Maniscalco. If you watched last year's Halloween vlog, you'll know my struggle to get this book. I finally went out and just bought it at a physical bookstore because I tried so hard to continuously buy this book and it never got sent to me. Um, so I will be continuing on with this series. This is the next, this is the second book. I read Stalking Jack the Ripper two years ago and I loved it. So I will also be reading this during Vampire Week as well. Um, yeah. Also, I just want to quick mention that I will be doing, so I, I know I said earlier I will be doing a Halloween day vlog and that will still be the case. I just don't know what I'm going to read on that day. 
probably going to end up being whatever books I didn't get to because I'm, I'm assuming there are probably going to be books here I didn't get to, especially this first week with the horror thriller. So I'll probably end up reading whatever of those I don't get to. Anyway, moving on to the next week. And that leaves us with one more week before Halloween, and that is going to be my Witches Week. And to start this off, this was the first book that I purchased with this reading extravaganza in mind. And that is The Ravens, and this is by Cass Morgan and Danielle Page, and this is perfect for the fall as well as spooky season because it is the idea that there is this sorority that is also a coven. And I believe it follows two perspectives. One is someone who is trying to be the president of the sorority slash the leader of the coven and a new pledge, I believe. Um, so it's going to be very interesting. I don't know exactly what like the plot is, but I just hearing that setting, I was like, yes. So it's, it's not dark academia, but it's kind of. It's more witchy than dark academia, but I just thought it would be perfect as I was going to head into my fall semester of junior year. And then I decided to take a break and transfer to a different school. But I still think this will be perfect for the season. I am super excited. Ta-da. And then I got The Nature of Witches. And this is by Rachel Griffin. And I've heard good things and meh things about it. So I'm choosing to kind of ignore everything about it so I can form my own opinion. Um, and yeah, therefore, I've ignored everything about it so I can form my own opinion. And so I will be reading this book. And then the final book of this whole thing-ish, kind of. Um, <laughs> I'll explain after I explain what the book is. Sweet and Bitter Magic, and this is by Adrian Tooley. And I, ever since this book came out, like before its release, it was on my radar. And I was really wanting to read it. And it's, I think it's not super witchy but more just like magic so i am tempted to get another witchy book but we'll see probably not because money but i'm super excited to read this nonetheless it is the idea that we have two main characters one has been cursed to not feel love unless she steals it from someone else and the other loves her father very much but something has happened to him so they make a deal she helps her father then she gives the love for her father to the other girl. So, very interesting. I'm very curious to see how this will end. If she will actually lose her love for her father, or if the other person will learn to love without needing to steal other love. I don't know. I don't know. But this is it. So, technically, those are all the books that I bought for this reading extravaganza. Like, I don't know what else to call it, so I'm calling it a reading extravaganza because it's not a readathon. It's not like an event that I'm doing with other people. You can certainly join me on this if you want. If you want to read the themed books every week, even if it's just like one book a week, you're welcome to. Let me know if you are and like what books you're reading. But I did end up buying a few other books anyway. There was one book that I bought that's not fall themed at all and that is the fourth volume of The Adventure Zone, um, The Crystal Kingdom. This is based off of a podcast that my husband loves to listen to and so I was like, okay, you know what, I just need to figure out what's going on. So I'm buying the volumes for their graphic novel of The Adventure Zone. Then I also bought from that first local bookstore A Pinch of Magic and this I initially bought because I thought it was going to be witchy, but apparently it's not. So it's these three sisters. They are each given, find, receive some magical item, and they have to use that magical item to save family or something. I don't quite know. But it's, it's a middle grade, and like I said, I've been wanting to read more middle grade. I'm so excited. Um, but it's a bit of a chunkier one. So it's kind of, if I have time in the reading extravaganza, like for some of the weeks where I only have like three book and like one or two is like a graphic novel or middle grade and I zip right through it, then maybe I'll read this as like a bonus book. So that way I will never run out of reading material. And I was never going to. And then the last book that I did buy, I bought for a specific event-ish. So that is Pumpkin Heads, and this is by Faith Erin Hicks, 
And it's also a graphic novel. It's also a rainbow rule. It's it's two of them. This is also my first Rainbow Rowell book ever. I have not read any of their other books at all whatsoever. Um, but again, very short graphic novel. Um, and I am going to read this the day that we actually go to a pumpkin patch to get our pumpkins for the season. I'm going to read it that day no matter what week it is. So just a heads up for that. Um, yeah, I'm really happy with the amount of like middle grade and graphic novels I have bought for this. Not only because it's going to make reading go quicker and actually me complete these goals, but also just because I've been wanting to like stretch more outside of just these long novels and whatnot. But yeah, so I bought a total of 25 books. That is a lot of books in one day. But it was all very much well worth it. I had so much fun and thank you all for sticking with me. Comment down below what you're gonna read and if you're not subscribed yet, like you should definitely subscribe by this point. And like hit the bell so that you know when I upload, which is on Thursdays, but during spooky season, I'm uploading a second time on Tuesdays. So yeah, you should definitely, definitely subscribe and like the video. Anyway, I'll go through all that at the very end of this video. And so now I'm going to direct your attention back to the actual day that all of this has happened to continue going through decorating my shelves. As you can probably tell, they're already decorated now, but let's look at the process. Thank you guys so much for watching. I had so much fun filming this and kind of going through my day, getting decorations, hauling a whole bunch of books. Uh, if you liked this, let me know by hitting the thumbs up button down below. Otherwise, comment down below what is your favorite Halloween decoration that you own. I'm always looking for more inspiration for more decorations around our apartment and my bookshelf. Um, subscribe if you haven't already as I am super excited to be making those spooky themed vlogs for you guys as well as doing those bonus videos on Tuesdays and yeah that should be everything so until I see you all in the next video I wish you happy spooky reading mm -hmm.